Welcome to my grocery store. All right, now I understand that this doesn't look exactly like the grocery stores you're used to shopping at, but in this video, you just have to use your imagination just a little bit. There's a little cash register right here. This is our checker, the dude with the big brain. And unbeknownst to anyone, the shopper comes along carrying not only a bag of groceries, but also the virus. The groceries go on the conveyor belt. We got a pie, keg of beer, pizza. Beep. 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 <coughs> and with no barrier between the shopper and the checkout clerk, all kinds of goo is spread from person to person. Now if you're gonna do this job, the first thing to do is to get all the people out of the situation and start out by cleaning this thing. If you're gonna be working on a job like this, you definitely wanna clean the area first and you probably wanna do it after hours. So you wanna negotiate a good time after hours when you can do the repair. You're gonna to wanna to measure this area here, this is your area that is going to get the guard and it could be the full thing. Let's say this was uh, one inch per foot. We'd have 11 and a half feet of counter space here. You could fill the whole thing or depending on the size of your acrylic, you might want to go for just a section that's going to protect the customer from the clerk and the clerk from the customer. So and just note that some of your checkout counters are gonna look like this. They're gonna have a lip to them. It's not just gonna be a flat face. If it's a flat face, it's gonna be so much easier to work with. But in the event that you have a lip, I will show you a workaround. Okay, you made all your measurements. The next thing you gotta do is go to the hardware store. You're just gonna need uh, three things. Uh, wood, fasteners, and your divider. And let's look at the dividers first. Um, this is some acrylic. And this stuff's kind of skanky. It's like been pulled out of old projects in the past, but when you buy your acrylic, you will find it at your hardware store in big sheets. You can pre-order it often in four by eight sheets, like the, sheet, the size of a sheet of plywood. I'll use this one. Okay, there's one sheet of acrylic. And then you need some wood. And I would recommend just using two by twos. So, uh, you know, small dimensional lumber. These are two by fours, and your two by twos are gonna look more like this. This is actually more like a actual two by inch and a half, but we're gonna use this, we're gonna call it a two by two. Here's another one. All right. Okay, we got our wood. And then in terms of fasteners, you're only gonna need a couple of things. You're gonna need some screws, just straight up wood screws, and these will be fine. Yeah, these guys, like three, three and a half inch screws. You can use deck screws, wood screws, whatever. It doesn't matter if they have like a Phillips head or a star drive, but you're gonna be happier if they have a star drive. Anyway, we got some screws, and there's just one more thing you need, one more critical item, and that is a finishing washer. Finishing washers. It's not just like a regular washer. I'm getting warmer, getting warmer. All right, here we go. Finishing washers down here. Uh, these are your finishing washers. And what they do is they allow you to uh, create a kind of good looking connection between your screw and your acrylic, but also more importantly to apply a nice even amount of pressure on the acrylic from the screw. Anyway, you'll see how that works. Get a handful of those. Okay, you might get lucky and be able to skip this step, but uh, some people are gonna need to cut their acrylic. Uh, make your measurement, and here I'm just marking on both sides so I get a nice even line. And then you need to make a really straight cut. So I'm gonna keep my straight edge on here, and I'm just gonna score it. The goal here isn't necessarily to cut through it, to score it. All right, here's a look at what I did here. There's just a scored line. 
Just like a little scratched line down the acrylic. Then I can bring it to my edge so my scored line is lined up with my edge to break it off. And a little bit down here didn't break off. I'm just going to nibble it off with my pliers. And by the way, this is really, really thin acrylic. This stuff is about a 16th or maybe an eighth of an inch thick. You don't need this to be like a bulletproof glass or anything like that. Thin stuff is going to work just fine. You know, you're just trying to block the spray. All right, so I've got my nicely cut sheet of acrylic, and the next thing I want to do is just measure the size of my rectangle. And I'm going to write that measurement down. That measurement, the size of this rectangle, is exactly the size, the external size of the box that I'm going to make. So I'm going to cut two of the long pieces exactly to my number, 33 inches. The vertical pieces are going to be shorter because I need to account for the width of the, to of the top and the bottom. Next thing to do is to stack them up side by side and measure their width. These guys come to exactly three and a half inches. So whatever yours add up to, just subtract that from the height the height of your vertical members. So mine are supposed to be 24 inches, my vertical members. I'm going to subtract three and a half and I'm going to get to 20 and a half. All right, so I got the wood cut. Let's mock it up and see how it works. I've got the two horizontal pieces right there. The two vertical pieces go on the inside. Put my clear acrylic on top. And that is perfect. All right, now you could pull this acrylic off and attach all the wood together, but it's really gonna be faster if you just screw the acrylic to the wood. It's gonna hold it all in place, and then you can attach these guys together. And then this is where you wanna use these finishing washers. If you don't use them, the screw's just not going to make a nice connection with your wood. But I'll show you how they look with the screw in there. It ends up kind of setting inside the finishing washer kind of nicely. But then this whole thing provides pressure on the acrylic and just holds it a lot better. So that's what I'm talking about. You get the finishing washer kind of exerting force in a circle around the screw instead of the screw head itself contacting the acrylic. Uh, next step is just to stiffen up this frame. Remember the different pieces of wood aren't really attached to each other. They're just kind of sitting here attached to the acrylic. So I'm going to flip it over and run some screws between these pieces just to attach them all to each other, just give it a little bit more stability. And again, I'm gonna pre-drill these holes at least halfway through, just so I don't split this wood. All right, now depending on your situation and the configuration of your market, this thing could be done right now. On the other hand, it might need a couple supports. All right, so your first option, which would be pretty good, would be to just attach this directly to the countertop. So you would uh, fit it in place where you want it, and then just put a couple screws on the inside straight down. And here again, I'm using the kind of longer, beefier screws to make this connection. All right, so that's the first way to do it. Uh, the plus side being that it only takes three screws. It's kind of like non-invasive on your uh, checkout aisle. And that makes it like quick and easy to install and remove. It does, however, have a bit more play to it than, than the next method I'll show you. All right, attachment technique number two assumes that you've got a little bit of a flat face beneath your edge that you can work with for your support. So let's assume this is your checkout aisle again, and I'm gonna put this guard up like this. 
push the groceries back a little bit. And the first thing I would do would be to mimic the other attachment method just to start it out. And then you can see that we've still got a little bit of wobble like we did before. So I'm gonna add a couple of vertical members just to kind of stiffen it up. So this way, this vertical guy is attached, two of these, and we have the points here, and it's a lot more rigid, you know, like really, really locked in. Okay, so the deal is that this is just a really, really simple build. It's something that just about anybody could do, and it's definitely not going to eliminate the possibility of a checker getting sick or a checker getting a customer sick, but it's a barrier, it's one more thing. But I would hope that a barrier like this might just add a little bit of extra protection at a place where people are kind of forced into close proximity. If you build one of these, let me know. If you want help building one of these, let me know. If you have questions, let me know. Down below, I'm gonna put links to all the fasteners and specifics. I'm also gonna drop some simple plans that I'm giving away for free straight up simple plans for free if you want to build one of these suckers. I just really hope it helps out.